the malls are beefing with each other subconsciously. They don't know they are, but they are. And the community knows it. So here's the list. We're going to break down the list. First one is Dolphin Mall. Now, Dolphin Mall for me is my personal favorite because I remember when I was in high school and Dolphin Mall was being built, they really hyped it up. They were like, there's going to be roller coasters. And, they're, they're, you know, Santa's going to be there 365 days of the year. And, you know, you go there and you can see your high school friends and you're like, oh, hey, what's up? You can hang out at the mall. You can watch a movie, laser tag, whatever they had. The arcade, right? Dave and Buster's. That's why I like Dolphin Mall. Now, get this. As I got older, you can still see your high school friends there. <laughs> you go to Dolphin Mall and lo and behold, there they are hanging out with their family. Like, you got a family now? But, you know, the place gets lit. You go to Dolphin Mall on a Friday or Saturday night. All right, and there's a live band, and then you get some guys playing the conga, and he's going all out, right? Some lady singing some songs. They put one big daiquiri bar in the middle of the place, so, like, as you see your kids running around, you can get drunk. I like it. Dolphin Mall is always thriving, but I have one question for Dolphin Mall. Why the two GameStops? The entry of the mall has a GameStop, and your kid's like, oh, mommy, I want the new Nintendo. No, you're not getting the new Nintendo. And then as you make your way down the mall, there's another GameStop, and you're like, all right, fine, you win. GameStop is looking out for the children. The second one on the list is the International Mall. I like it because that's the place where I go and return my Amazon packages. And it's very convenient to have a Kohl's that has like an entire area dedicated for you to go in there and just, you know, and then they give you $5 off because Amazon fucked up on your order. Like, I like it. And that's it. And then, you know, what else do they got? They got a nice sized mall. You could find all the basics there. You got your Hot Topic. You got your Spencers. And then uh, House of Horrors and Halloween. <laughs> There's some reason they have a Halloween thing going on. Now, the third on the list is Mall of America's. Dolphin Mall was my teenage years and current present years. But Mall of America's is a little bit more like a museum. You know, like if you watch a movie about zombies or like post-apocalypse, the Mall of America's, you don't, need to, you don't need to fix it up. You could just start, all right, and action. You don't need to put any props. Like it looks deserted. And the background is full of like empty shops and even where the theaters used to be, they have it closed down. I remember back in the day in the 90s, they had a badass arcade area there. And I would go there and play games before watching, you know, the Jurassic Park that just came out. It was an amazing time. And then as you slowly start aging and then you drive by that area in Flagler and you just look to the left, you're like, my God, what happened? The mall, ironically, is still open. And it's got like small boutiques that are like mom and pop owned or like Obamacare. I think there's a DMV somewhere in there, too. Like, it looks like it's on life support. Mall of America's, for some reason, just doesn't want to close down. It's, like, derelict. You know, like, you got Costco and Home Depot right across the street from the Mall of America's. Those two stores, like, the only two that are visiting the Mall of America's while it's on its deathbed, right? They're the only ones in the hospital just looking at it, slowly dying. Be like, how you doing, buddy? You doing okay? It's just there to lie, like, beep, beep, beep. We still got a Marshalls. <laughs> Next on the list, we've got Sunset Mall. Now, this mall, this one is on par with the Mall of Americas because the Mall of Americas, even though it looks like it hasn't been open since the 90s, this mall looks like it's been trying its best to stay alive, but it's still empty. The last time I went there, it, it looked like it was still on shutdown for COVID. Like, there was no one there. Like, whenever you walk by Sunset Mall, you feel like you're trespassing. Like, I'm not supposed to be here. It kind of feels illegal to walk around the mall. And then when you see someone else walking around the mall, it kind of feels like the Wild West. Like, are you feeling lucky, punk? There's only room for one person to enjoy these closeout sales, and it's me. Right, next up, we've got Merrick Park. I love that place, man. I think this place is like one of the, the best kept mall secrets of Miami because no one really talks about it unless you're a wealthy person in Coral Gables. It's almost like they don't want anyone to know because, like, oh, we don't want the youngins running around where I get my khakis. Or my Cole Hans uh, shoes. Yeah, it's like a cul-de-sac with three levels. It's great for parkour. If you're into parkour, you can start running around and jumping off stuff. And, you know, sometimes you can get a little discouraged if you see that, you know, you're trying to shop for shoes and then you see the shoe store on the third floor. You're like, oh, oh boy, I got to climb up there. Damn. It's definitely one of Miami's best kept secrets. All right, next up on the list, we've got the Miami Design District. What a flex. It's pretentious in a good way. Every store there, you're going to spend more money than you should if you were to go shopping. $600 shoes, $500 pants, and $400 socks. <laughs> I feel like I'm in an amusement park whenever I visit the Miami Design District. 
without any rides, of course, because the real thrill is actually buying something that expensive. You get excited where it's like, oh my God, I can actually afford this $800 button up. That's crazy. You know how much this uh, futon cost me? 20 grand. Why would you buy that? Because I'm from Miami, bro. You bring a girl over, where's all your furniture? Why This futon here ran me a lot of money. You should be impressed. This, is, this futon is worth a Honda Civic. Next up, let's keep going. I've been to Sawgrass Mills recently, and I've been to the Falls recently, but for some reason, I don't remember much of it. And the only thing I know for a fact is that Sawgrass Mills and the Falls are the two farthest apart, okay? Those are two malls that are like the North and South Star. If you ever want to go from the Falls to Sawgrass Mills, you need a passport. It's going to take like three hours. You might as well take a train. God forbid you ever got an Uber all the way there. Oh my God, they don't got my, my shoe size. Let's go to Sawgrass. Holy shit, I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> so Aventura Mall, I haven't been there in a long time. Uh, it's well decorated, and I know that they've got a second floor, and that's kind of a flex. You guys are making most of your space, and then you gotta open up shop on the second floor, so that's kind of cool. It's a great place to people watch because of the second floor balcony. You know, it's just kind of weird. Like, it, I love people watching. It's a great way to come up with material. It's just like staring at people. But the thing is, you know, if somebody's walking beneath you and then you're just there on the balcony, like looking at them and then for some random reason, they just look up and then you're just there to like, you know, <laughs> glaring at them and they're just like, what the fuck? But next up, we've got the swap shop. Never been there, but I'm assuming it's kind of like the flea market off the top of my head. What I'm assuming the swap shop is the swap shop is like, you know, when you when you leave a Ross and then they have like a bunch of like trinkets and random stuff like as, as you exit and you're like, oh, yeah, I completely forgot. Uh, I should get this birthday card because my aunt, my aunt's birthday is next week. And then you get it right. The swap shop is like all it's like that. But times 100 where you walk in there and you'd be like, oh, look, a Bluetooth speaker from China for twenty dollars. This would be perfect for the next time I go to the beach. Oh, look, a saddle for a horse. Now, next time when I go visit my family in Homestead, I could just saddle up on one of the ponies there. <laughs> That's what I like about those kinds of stores, man. It's just like random. Hey, I'm going to the shop. You you need anything? Which shop are you going for? Uh, I'm going to go to the, the, the swap shop. Man, get whatever you want for me, bro. I know it's going to be there. Well, what do you want specifically? You'll know when you see it. <laughs> and then finally, the one that actually legitimately did close down is the Opalaka Flea Market. Rest in peace, Opalaka Flea Market. You were one of the coolest shops we had in Miami. This one I remember... I was afraid for my life as I was walking around, but then later on I decided, you know what? You could buy ice cream there. You could buy lunch there. You could buy uh, clothes there. You could buy bootleg stuff. I would see purses that were, you know, high brand purses, something for like $20, $30. That's all you need them for. You only need them for one night. You go to Club Live one night. No one's going to know it's a fake bag because it's so dim. Here's what you do. Oh, of course, you can't anymore because it's not open anymore. But you go to Opalaka, you buy a $30 Louis bag. You go to the, you go to Club Live, you start dancing with the Louis bag from afar and from the dim lighting. It looks like you got a Louis bag. Somebody's like, oh, sh that could be my sugar mama. Let me go holler, right? And then right after, you just throw it away. Let's go back to your place. Sure, hold on. Let me throw this bag away. <laughs> hey, don't you want anything that's in there? No, it was empty because I'm a baller like that. <laughs> that Louis bag was one night old. I don't need to wear it no more. It's out of style.